Hello, my name is Bart Brecka, and I'm prepared to present a GSXR front fork assembly where the triple clamp has uh, a dimensional constraint problem. And I'm, I want to present the workflow on how to m modify the triple clamp using a detailed drawing using Creo 1.0. Before I start, however, I'd like to present designengine.com, the uh, blog, and show you that we have various jobs each day, good three to five pro engineer related jobs each day, with various articles that might revolve around products that were developed using pro engineer or actual software reviews. Now, I want to go into the Pro e Tools website to present the various classes that we might teach and just to show this one video I'm sorry this one uh, image that my mouse is hovering over is a die cast version of a part we'll be looking at uh, today the the CNC version of the triple clamp now I've already uh, presented my login and password so when I click through here it's not going to prompt me for the login and password now I want to just quickly show our advanced assembly and detail drawings level 2 class which is offered pretty much the second week of each month. We're in the process of, the, of changing this training material around so the video that, uh, that we're creating today will be an icon in this, in, uh, in this training material. This, this uh, Legos racer this part that I'm hovering my mouse over is too large and if you'll notice the three holes here don't line up with the three bosses on the Lego itself so in this exercise one would try to we, we present a workflow to using using the detailed drawing as a tool to dial in the various geometry once I once I dimension what it is and how far it's off I have a ratio to scale the part down when you go to scale this part down you'll see it's the mirrored version of this part so you start to discover a workflow on how a designer might actually learn pro engineer if they were using it on their own a, a sort of path of discovery if you will and we just try to accelerate that path of discovery notice the interferences in this geometry the exercise is to dial in those geometries and make this part a moldable plastic part so now I've already got the assembly up and running this is the GSXR triple clamp that I was talking about earlier and you'll notice if I hover over the part it's pretty clear that there's an interference in here we just don't know how much so my workflow is to open up the part and take a look at it scale it to fit my window and this these three underlying sketch geometries are as a classic design engine modeling methodology and if you can see there's three two arcs two circles that control the triple clamp ultimately it's mirrored the second feature is an underlying curved geometry that looks at those features and the third is a culmination of all those features all those sketches and then the then the fourth feature is actually a protrusion that looks at those underlying curved geometries I'm just going to go ahead and edit this geometry the 2.6 to something a little bit larger to get a sort of sense of how the geometry is built. Now, now I can go into the assembly. I'm going to make that just a little bit smaller, 2.3. Okay, and uh, now what I want to do is go into my assembly drawing. And 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 cut across uh, through the assembly. I want to cut a cross section through the assembly and then present that in a drawing. Still a little bit off. So let's turn on the data planes. Creo has, as with Wildfire Five, created this following the Microsoft industry standard for ribbons. And and uh, what I want to do is just go to View and Manage Views to add a cross sectional view. I'll call it A for A, A. And then I'm going to make a datum offset from one of these datums here. It requires an assembly datum, so I'm just going to create one at zero offset. 
Now let's uh, click over, I have to actually create a drawing. I like to call the drawing exactly the same thing that the assembly is called. So I'll just uh, dictate off the top. Assembly drawing, there we go. And the most recent assembly or part I had in memory is what the drawing looks looks for. Okay, so my, my default views structure, whoever built this assembly, or the first feature that's in the assembly probably didn't think about creating a drawing. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of switch, rotate the views. It's, it's prompting me now, do I want to rotate the other views? I'm going to go ahead now and to angles and rotate that around the horizontal at 180. rotate it perfectly. Let's go ahead and change the scale of my drawing to 0.25 and uh, I think a D-size drawing would be adequate. Okay, and let's turn the datums off. I don't remember exactly which view I cut the cross-section through. I'm going to guess that it's this one, so I'm going to go ahead and double-click on this view and ch it, if, I, if I hit the plus sign and I see a red X, that means I guessed incorrectly, so I'm going to set the arrows to be in this view and hit OK. It should splice my drawing in half, and you can see the cross sections. Now I can enter. Now I can s actually get a dimensional constraint using annotations to see the amount of clearance or interference in this case clearance that I've got. I'm going to go ahead and adjust that number to a three decimal places. Double click on it. The, it's, it's a clearance of 0 0.01. Now if I'm going to ultimately convert this triple clamp to a die cast part, I'm probably going to need a little bit of material to hone down so I can get my tolerances just right. So I, what, I, what I want is a, uh, a clearance, I'm sorry, an interference of 0 0.01. 015. Let's make it 005. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, click back over to my. So I, I can see what the, what the value is, and if I go the wrong direction with with some math, I should see a mistake right away. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, make a mistake on purpose here, and add point zero. 1, 5 to my to my dimension and hit regenerate and come back over to my drawing to see what happened. Looks like we went the wrong direction. I made my clearance even greater. Okay, so what I want to do is understand that value at 0, 1, 8 and let's go ahead and uh, and subtract 0, 1, 8 from the geometry. This time we won't make a mistake. So I'm going to subtract 1 8 from the geometry and hit regenerate. And I'm going to click back over to my drawing and see it see it update. And and we went exactly at half the value. So that's because I need to do 0 1 8 twice. So now I'm going to click back over to my drawing because of the diameter. Click back over to my my part and make that modification again, and I'm going to subtract the 0, 1, 8 again. And I'm going to add in the amount of, uh, I'm going to subtract a little bit more. The point zero one eight should get me to the exact value that I want, and then I'm going to go ahead, and I need to go ahead and add in the amount of interference that I want to be able to hone down. Okay, so this 01 is probably a rounding factor of of one of the other parts not coming in at exactly a, the right amount. Let's go ahead now to the triple clamp and I'm going to go ahead and subtract uh, a little bit more. I'm going to subtract 0 0.005 minus 0 0.005. I'm just doing doing that so you can see that you could, you know, Sign there. 
that you can stack up different math. Now that should give me an interference of 0 0.01 approximately. Put that in four decimal places. So you can see how I'm able to use the drawing as a tool to sort of dial in the geometry. In this case, I've got a little bit of interference. And uh, the drawing will help me determine exactly what number I'm getting as I start to make these modifications and understand how they work in the drawing. The drawing just updates for me. All right, that's the end of my presentation. Thanks for watching, and please look for some other videos and consider coming to Design Engine for training in the future.